Hey everyone, welcome back to the Florida Relocation Guide YouTube channel. My name is Adam Hancock, and today we are going deep on Lakewood Ranch, Florida. This is my updated 2023 guide to cover the entire area. This is the guide to replace all guides. I'm gonna cover everything that you want to know and that you should know that you might not be aware of. Um, I hope it adds you a ton of value, and let's hop in. All right, let's first start off with the highlight reel. So what we have here is the number one multi-generational master plan community in the entire United States. 2022 Gold Award winner for best lifestyle community in the United States. Best of the best award winner recognition for best health and fitness. And then you add to that 40% of the total acreage of this huge area set aside for poignant open space. You add an element to that that is plenty full commercial mixed use developments in between. So you combine those two elements, very key here, regardless of which neighborhood you sit in this rather large region, 20 minutes apart between neighborhoods, you have access, easy access to recreation, entertainment, dining, shopping, amenities, and much, much more. And if that's not enough from you, there's over two dozen different communities in here, and I believe you can still build in over 20 of them, 55 and up, gated, non-gated, amenity ridden, lifestyle first, kid friendly and everything in between. So needless to say, a unbelievable offering. All right, next is what is life actually like here in Lakewood Ranch, Florida? You know, what's interesting to me is when the developers first plan this area, you know, they envision that where you live can alter how you live. And it's cliche to say, but I think it's poignant in a lot of ways, because think about where people actually spend their time, a lot of people. You know, whether you're driving to work and back every day, um, you're running kids around to different activities, trying to manage that. Even if you're socializing or golfing at a private club in town, to a lot of people, the house they come back to, or the, the one single neighborhood, is just this home base where they sit to do all these kind of things. The Lakewood Ranch developers feel, felt that could be way more inclusive, way more balanced, and I think they did that in a couple key areas. You know, one of those ways right off the bat from my experience is ease of meeting people. You know, it, it, you could say that you move here and there's, it's so big and there's 20,000 plus people and you would just automatically meet people, but that doesn't just happen like that. And I know that's an insecurity of a lot of folks moving from out of state without family is how do you simply meet people of like mind, of like age, of lifestyle? And Lakewood Ranch does that in a myriad of different ways we're going to get into, but force communal environments depending that dictate by your social acuity, your outgoingness. The second thing is intentional living. You know, I think one of the biggest things about the energy of this place is people are pumped to be here. People wanted to be here, waited their whole lives to retire, came to the place they've been researching online for 10 years. They're excited to be here. Everyone's excited to be here. It, you know, it's inclusive because of that reason. They're excited that you came. There's more people here. The third thing, healthy balance. And we're back. You can see behind me that, um, you know, I always joke that this is like Pleasantville, right? You know, Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. and people are just out riding their bikes and kids are laughing and playing. It feels like Pleasantville and you're like, do any of these people work? Well, this place feels like the, it's more balanced in life. And I think a lot of the way they've done all of this stuff, your life isn't discombobulated. You know, the way, you know, what you do to work out, what you do to get outside and enjoy the 300 plus days of sunshine, um, where you work, the less commute, all that kind of stuff blends where your life isn't a hamster wheel, where you're escaping this thing to get to this thing. It's all blended. And I think people act that way. There's tons of gyms, there's Pilates, there's yoga, there is bike clubs, all that kind of thing in between. And the last one that possibly one of the most important is the age demographic. You know, there's really something for everybody here. That number one multi-generational, it's not number one master plan, it's number one multi-generational, and it's for a reason. It has a such a good spread. You know, I'm 36 years old, I live in Lakewood Ranch, I have two kids under six. Gentleman behind the camera is a few years older than me, has no kids, lives three miles down the street from me. We've helped 55 and up communities, we've helped first time home buyers to 85 year olds, and all find a way to satiate the socialization needs, the different communities, the non-kids, the want more kids, the affordability and everything in between. So I think you can't discount the size of this allowing that type of span. All right, now let's run through what's actually at your disposal as far as entertainment, and we're gonna move swiftly. First up, 600 plus live events on average every single year in Lakewood Ranch. 360 days a year, that's like event and a half per day on average. These are live events, they're concerts, they are builder events, first Fridays, everything in between. You also have 60 plus private clubs 
and membership organizations that are available to you. And this is where you get more narrow, uh, really like-minded people. They have Peloton, Pelican Watching Club. There is sports watch parties. And the really cool thing here, there's over 50 uh, private charity related organizations that are supported by these memberships. Next up is three separate town centers. And this is where I was getting at with, regardless of which neighborhood you live in, they very intelligently situated these whole areas to support your needs. And they have 300 plus shops and eateries that just span amongst these three hubs. And one of them is downtown Waterside Place where I stand right here, which is absolutely lovely. The newest, the sexiest one. The second one is downtown Lakewood Ranch. That is the original. And the third is called the green, which a lot of people may, might not be aware of. And that's the mixed use space that sits off of State Road 70 and Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. Um, and as a bonus to all of that, not considered Lakewood Ranch, University Town Center is about three, four miles from this whole thing and adds a whole nother layer to that experience. Now on the getting outside and getting active, 150 separate miles of trails. Think about the amount of territory that takes up. And these include bike trails, walking and running. On top of that, you have nine separate community parks that just sit within the Lakewood Ranch Census District. And these include uh, playgrounds and dog parks. You have um, uh, open sports fields to the public. You have organized sports fields. There is a roller hockey rink and really everything in between. All right, and then we have Golf and Country Club. So later in the video, I'm gonna talk about all the different deeded golf access options, but there's one main club that you can actually join from other neighborhoods, and that's the Lakewood Ranch Golf and Country Club. 54 holes of golf across three separate courses. You have two award-winning uh, clubhouses that are absolutely lovely, and they've won a myriad of different awards as a private club for the United States. You have tons of live events, you have after-school programs, you have a world-class golf academy, and much more. All right, and then we have the Sarasota Polo Grounds. So as commercialized as what looks like standing behind me and all the things I just alluded to, there are literally 170 acres of manicured polo grounds about three miles from where I stand, seven fields, a full regulation size area, and people come from all over the world to play there. I think the season started a week ago. So they've really done a great job of using that open space concept of weaving in where a lot of this area, including where I personally live, looks pretty country still. Okay, and then we have the Premier Sports Campus, which is a nice little outfit. If you go a little bit north from where I'm standing now, you have 140 acres, including 23 mixed-use sports fields, where they do real legit style professional tournaments, but there's sports for every kind. So they do soccer there for youth sports. I think it's called the Chargers. Um, they do many tournaments. I think there's a, the USA plays some sort of element there for soccer as well, um, which is a nice little one if you're uh, into sports. All right, and working our way towards the finish line here, you can't talk about Lakewood Ranch without mentioning schools. You know, the cool thing about the way they oriented it, and especially in the future development, pretty much regardless of where you live in the community, it's not that hard to find some highly rated kindergarten all the way through high school. Then you have specialty. There's several Montessori uh, options. There's public charters. There's even 10 higher education um, options here as well. So you can really go from end to end of the spectrum. All right, and that brings me to my final one, the farmer's market. So as we work, walked our way around here, I hope you enjoyed the view of downtown Waterside. There is a farmer's market that exists on the street behind me here all year round, every single Sunday with over 100 curated vendors and it's continually growing. And with these 25 foot wide sidewalks, the safe feel of once you're here, you're here with kids. Um, it's not just an ordinary farmer's market in my mind. It's very in vogue, it's very lovely, um, and it's enjoyable for everybody. All right, now onto the communities, where to actually live in this place. You know, the interesting part is with the emergence of master plan ideas like a Lakewood Ranch, Florida, across the state of Florida, people tend to fall in love with the whole concept, the whole region. Now, the problem with most master plan that are smaller is either they're too small or they're not oriented the right way, where folks are not going to have two or three options per category. And what I mean by that is like, even Lakewood Ranch, 30 plus communities. It feels like you're gonna come here and have a million options, but when you actually narrow your criteria, you know, price range, amenities you need, school zones you wanna be in, um, the size of the home, most people get down to a way shorter list, maybe two, three total, and they're not really apples to apples. In this particular community, because of the diversity and the intelligence of how they actually built it, in my experience, People do typically get where they actually have two or three viable choices. Now they're not apples to apples, but that's a good thing because then you can choose what's really important. You can lean into area versus bigger house, more size. But if you love, love, love the area, 
you actually have a plan B and potentially a plan C. And what's really disheartening, in a lot of areas, people fall in love with them, and if plan A doesn't work, they have to leave the entire area. All right, now what I think will be helpful is, let's talk categories. 55 and up first. There are only technically two 55 and up new construction neighborhoods in all of Lakewood Ranch. Um, and they're Dell Webb, which is the Pulte-based brand, uh, amenity rich, tons of floor plans, a lot of affordability, and people really, really follow this brand. Crestwind would be a unique one. A little bit northern, uh, it is built by Coulter, who is known as a background of building high-rise condominiums. But the thing I want to get across here about 55 and up is a lot, what a lot of people are trying to do by satiating that need, it's actually achievable in far more communities than the two that are technically 55 and up because of the average demographic and the lifestyle by just changing your criteria. All right, category number two I'm calling, I'm inventing, it's called lifestyle first. This is one where I would say people are trying to really go after amenities first, and then the house is secondary. House is lovely, but still secondary. First one is Esplanade Azario. A lot of people love this brand. This is a Taylor Morrison brand. It's golf and social membership, um, and it has some of the best amenities in the entire county. Ridiculous stuff. Second one I wanted to mention uh, is unique. So Emerald Landing and Nautique are two separate neighborhoods, one by David Weekly, one by MI Homes, that both sit in the new Waterside District. These are, um, these are cool, like city-based looking concepts. They're narrow, you know, there's courtyards in between, carriage-style houses, unique townhomes with loft-style second floors, and they all sit within a walking district to downtown Waterside at the beginning of this video and that is their amenity. But the coolness of the homes fit that area well. Star Farms uh, is north, very kid-friendly, a lot of affordability, and this is basically a city within a city. There's like four layers of separate amenities that these different homes have access to. And the last one I wanted to mention is called Lakeshore Condos, and that would give you actually condominium living in downtown Lakewood Ranch, which is not commonplace here in Lakewood Ranch as a whole. Next up is golf. So we have the Lakewood Ranch Golf and Country Club I mentioned in the previous section. Now the actual neighborhood component is two. It's Country Club West, Country Club East. East is way newer, but in totality, this whole thing is all resale. You can get post 2015 homes, but it will be a resale home. And then that club is actually optional membership. So if you don't golf, but you like the social component, you don't have to be forced into the high golf fees. Second is Esplanade Azario, which is the one I mentioned in the previous, the, those crazy amenities. That is actually a split deeded, 100% deeded neighborhood. Half social and golf memberships, half just golf memberships you know, 600 bucks and you get world-class lifestyle and that golf course is quite lovely. The final one that you can do, because there's not a million different golf neighborhoods in Lakewood Ranch actually, technically, is Lakewood National. And that's the most affordable on this list. Also, I believe it's technically sold out now as far as building a new home. It's all Lennar, so that's the affordability component. Had two golf courses and this one is also deeded. But Lakewood Ranch Golf and Country Club would be the opportunity where you could live at the Isles, you could live at the Lake Club, you can live in all of Waterside or anywhere surrounding. And if there's availability, you can join that club and have the best of both worlds. Next is a category I'm coining uh, unique and luxurious. So the first neighborhood on that list is the one I'm standing at right here. You have to mention the Lake Club. The Lake Club is maybe the only neighborhood in all of Lakewood Ranch where it looks like nothing else. Like if you're in love with it, it's the only option in your world. It's, it's damn near close to where this would be hard to replace as a plan B. Um, uh, it's mixed builders, you know, stock development is doing the building right now in Genoa is the last phase, but the, Arthur Ruttenberg was in here, Lee Weatherington was in here. Landscaping looks like Italy in certain parts of it. The clubhouse looks like a castle, R ridiculous stuff. Uh, the second one is Wild Blue. That's a brand new one, that, uh, the video I just recently posted. This is one where I feel like it does fill a void of custom and luxury that we haven't had for a while. Um, this is going to be all custom, all mixed building, and it's on huge bodies of water. 1.8 to about $4 million. Stock Development, who's doing the houses behind me right now, um, is heading it up. Arthur is in there, Lee Weatherington's in there, um, John Cannon in, in there, and then they added Anchor Builders, which builds downtown a lot. Um, then you have unique, like even more unique, Kingfisher Estates, 13 total John Cannon homes on Kingfisher Lake um, that's coming out in Waterside. You have Monarch Estates by John Cannon. You have the Alcove, which gets you a, a lower price point on semi-custom with Neil Signature. Um, so really interesting in the world of 1 million plus custom in Lakewood Ranch right now. 
Then we have Kid Friendly. Obviously, this one's important to my lifestyle, but uh, Kid Friendly is a broad brush, right? That's a, that's a uh, very vague description to lay on neighborhoods because they can mean anything. But what I orient here is like maybe affordability for the amount of space you can get, floor plans that will orient multiple kids in a household, which isn't every floor plan, um, amenities within the community, and then situating in good school districts. A couple I would look at as far as just a research tool. Sweetwater by MI Homes um, in the northern grid of Lakewood Ranch um, is a really interesting offering. Uh, Star Farms, which I mentioned on the list as well. This has crazy amenities. DR Horton offers a lot of affordability. There's also custom in there if you want to go that route. Um, but this would get you in a great school district and tons of options, 1,500 homes in here. Uh, Lorraine Lakes is Lennar, same one that built uh, Lakewood National. Uh, there's gonna be a bar at the, there's gonna be like restaurant service at the pool, indoor basketball court, crazy amenities. Lennar is affordable. Um, the Isles, actually for a luxury component, um, offers a little bit of affordability. And um, that's what I put on my short list for kids. All right, the last one I wanna mention before we digress here, I'm calling interesting slash affordability. These are the ones that like Lakewood Ranch or website presence probably wouldn't do it justice. Um, and on this list, uh, Summerfield, first neighborhood ever built in Lakewood Ranch. This is where I lived with a rental while I was building my house. Um, there is a $100 total HOA the entire year. It's walking distance to Summerfield Park, which is amazing if you have young kids. A lot of affordability. And these were old school custom homes back in the day. This is where they built first. Um, so that one's interesting. I like Greenbrook for the same reasons. I think that was the second neighborhood ever built. Slightly newer, same kind of vibe. No amenities in your neighborhood, so you save money, but you're close to the Greenbrook Adventure Park, um, which is really, really cool. Um, Lorraine Lakes, which I mentioned, the Lennar, I think that gives you a new component. Star Farms, because of the amenities. Solera, one of the lowest average price points in all of Lakewood Ranch with DR Horton, and could be an interesting retirement investment option. Um, and that's what I would look at right now. All right, and the final thing I wanted to talk about is the actual area. You know, as amazing as Lakewood Ranch itself is from the discussion we just had, the icing on the cake is the region this place sits in as a whole. You know, you have world-class beaches, arts and culture at your fingertips, travel in and out is easy, sporting events galore, and much, much more. Let me give you a, just a little bit more texture on these overall. First, beaches and coastline. 30 to 45 minutes from where I stand right here, you have Siesta Key Beach, unbelievable, Anna Maria Island, Venice Beach, including Casperson and Brohard, you have Lido and Longboat Key. Everything from quartz white sand that doesn't get hot to the touch to private beach clubs and everything in between. And that's not counting any of St. Pete Beach, Treasure Island, Clearwater Beach, Naples, or any of that in between. Then it comes to, let's say just travel in general. You know, that's important where 99% of our clients don't live in the state. So when they come here, they wanna go back out for business, or for family, you have four really important options. Because of Lakewood Ranch's northern location, you have easy in and out without having to be on top of them. And one of those is the new SRQ airport. 20 minutes away, that's your closest one. And it's smaller uh, historically, but it is one of the fastest growing in the entire United States. On top of that, your best two options are going north 60 miles one way, it takes about an hour exactly, to Tampa International, everything you could offer without having to go all the way to Orlando. Go south of that 1.5 hours, you have Southwest Florida International, which is Fort Myers based. You know, a lot of Canadians come in and out from that, a lot of international come in and out from that. And then you also have St. Pete Clearwater, which is another smaller airport to give you a fourth uh, option to boot. All right, then we have something for the sports fan in the crew. Southwest Florida offers a amazing array. Spring training baseball first. We have the Orioles in the middle of Sarasota. We have the Braves in Welland Park at Cool Today Park. We have the uh, Pirates in Brainton. You have the Phillies in Clearwater, you know, a mini Fenway Park in Fort Myers. So everything's within a couple hours. Uh, on a bigger scale than that, we have the Tampa Bay Lightning. Amazing time for Tampa Bay sports right now. Tampa Bay Lightning is an hour away um, in Channel Side in downtown uh, Tampa. We have the Tampa Bay Bucks with Tom Brady, Tampa Bay, which is a couple miles from that. Uh, we have the Tampa Bay Rays, the baseball team, which is actually in St. Petersburg. We have the Rowdies, which is minor league soccer. Um, so plenty of uh, things to satiate that need. I also wanted to mention arts and culture. If you're into this kind of thing and this strikes your fancy, Sarasota, Florida is actually considered the cultural coast. And it's because of the high density of uh, performances and theaters and world-class art and galleries in a pretty small geographic area. You know, you have the Ringling Museum right in town, world-renowned. You have the Oslo Theater, you have the Sarasota Ballet, et cetera, um, but tons and tons of offering in a pretty small area. And the last one I just wanted to hit before we completely wrap up is one of my favorite, macro geography. 
I'm, if you're transient like me and you had to pick one place in the entire state to live, then I don't know if you beat Sarasota. From a macro geography standpoint, everything that Florida really has to offer minus the panhandle is in Southwest Florida, mainly. Um, so if you're saying, I love Sarasota, but what else is there? If you, this was your home base, you are 45 minutes one way to St. Petersburg, Florida. You are an hour one way to Tampa, like I mentioned. You are two hours to Orlando. You're an hour and a half to Fort Myers. You're two hours to Naples and Marco Island. Three and a half to Miami. There's a ferry that takes you to the Keys from Fort Myers. You're three and a half to Boca Raton, West Palm Beach, four and a half to Jacksonville. You're five and a half to Savannah, Georgia. So if you had to pick one spot and you went to any of those other spots as your home base, everything's far, you pick here. Day trip ability, I don't know if you need anything else. All right, my friends, that is finally a wrap for my 2023 Lakewood Ranch, Florida Manifesto. My name is Adam Hancock once again. I really, really hope you enjoyed this one. Please subscribe and like for me if you will, if you did. Um, it really helps with the algorithm. Um, I also have a myriad of uh, free guides, analytical tools, things you can download, absolutely free. So look around the channel, the description box, anything in between. And finally, if you're buying or selling real estate, any help in Lakewood Ranch, Welland Park, Tampa, Naples, anywhere in the region of Florida, new construction or not, please reach out. Our team would love to help you, would love to discuss that further and get you engaged in all these wonderful opportunities. And thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.